am I out here? Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd in my eye. <laughs> it's time for an album review, Nujabis, Nujabis, Spiritual State. This guy is a Japanese music producer known for his really beautiful blend, a smooth blend, of hip-hop and jazz music. Of course, he was not the first artist to do this kind of blend. People like De La Soul and The Roots and Tribe Called Quest came before him and, and did that too. And it's not like he was the only guy doing this stuff into the 2000s either. You had Jay Dilla, you had Mad Lib. But still, this guy managed to come along in the early 2000s with metaphorical music and really carve out a niche for himself. And that's because his style was noticeably different. The beats he produced were just silkier. They were more sensual, kind of serene, and really took a bold musical direction. Instead of just getting these short, choppy, looped little samples of, of grooves that, that came out of jazz songs, on Nujabi's tracks you were getting like these really long and, and winding horn leads and solos. There are some points where the, the horns and the piano and the drums, everything just sounds like it's, it's live. Of course, that was helped along by some of the guest musicians he was able to bring on to his tracks, like Uyama Hiroto, saxophone player. And when he wasn't pushing out these really serene, jazzy, and detailed beats, he was bringing on guest MCs, all of which kind of had their own different flavors, but they would all kind of consistently deliver these positive messages and philosophical statements. You could definitely pick Nujibi's style out easily, but... He passed away last year, sadly. And I've said this in the past, you guys should already know, I'm usually kind of iffy when it comes to posthumous albums. Because the thing is, labels love to release music after an artist has died or a band has broken up. It almost doesn't matter if the material on the album is, is weak because everybody is heartbroken or upset or really, really hyped. And critics aren't going to say anything terrible about the album because they might look like a jerk. Then whether or not the material is good becomes this controversy and everybody gets mad at each other when really everyone should be mad at the record label for basically musically grave robbing their artists. Well, in defense of this album getting released, it is getting put out on the record label Nujibis started himself. So maybe I could kind of see my way to... Okay, it's getting released on his own record label. Mm -hmm. The question still remains, if Nujibis were alive, would this album have been put out? Because the thing is, before his death, it had been about five years since he'd released a full-length LP. So is the material on here new? Is it old? Is it finished? Is it rushed? Is it just kind of a bunch of B-sides? Personally, this LP does kind of feel like a slightly different direction for Nujibis. I wouldn't say I'm hearing leftovers from previous albums because what I'm hearing on here feels relatively new. For one, a lot of the tracks on this LP feel like they've been completely stripped of any and all hip-hop influence. Like the opening track. Sure, the rhythm in the background kind of feels very repetitive, very looped, but between the saxophone and the pianos on that track, I basically feel like I'm listening to a straight-up jazz song. Very smooth, sunset, seaside beach jazz. It's a style that's shown up in Nujibis music before, but I don't think this boldly. It felt a little cheesy to me at first, but the more I listened, the more I kind of realized, well, you know, it's kind of relaxing and it's really pretty in the way that the saxophone and the pianos just kind of layer over one another. I just wish the rhythm wasn't so repetitive. I just feel like I'm hearing all this jazz instrumentation, this this improvisational element, but the rhythm in the background is just really stale and repetitive and just kind of monotonous. Like, would the Jazz Messengers album Caravan be as good as it is if Art Blakey got replaced by a drum machine? No. 
That's why I'm also kind of iffy with the track Gone Are The Days, because there's this really hard driving electronic beat behind all this jazz instrumentation, another saxophone part brought by Uyama Hiroto. I love what him and the piano were doing, but I just wish the, the rhythm were a little more diverse. Now, 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 if you thought previous tracks really kind of indulged in this smooth jazz sound, just wait till you hear the last track, because with the, the effects on the saxophone and this really kind of sexy R&B beat from the 90s, the only thing this track is missing is, like, chimes. It's basically the kind of music that when I was a kid, it was a joke. Like, listening to that was a joke, when you heard it, it was funny, but now I'm listening to it over a decade later on this CD, because I have to review it, and I'm kind of, like, enjoying it. There are instrumentals on here, though, that have more of a hip-hop flavor, like the track Spiral, which has this boom-bap beat, these airy flutes, some disembodied vocal samples, and the track Far Fowls, which comes afterwards, has pretty much the same instrumentation, but a totally different feel to it. It has this sample that, that really makes me kind of feel like it took a chunk of music from the soundtrack to an old kung fu movie. Now on the downside with this album, and I do feel like there is a pretty noticeable downside, there is some filler on here, definitely. The tracks Color of Autumn and Rainy Way Back Home just don't really develop as, as much as many other tracks on here do. They feel short, they feel a little uncooked. I feel the same way about the track Dawn on the Side, which has this flute solo over it that doesn't really feel as purposeful as some of the solos on the other tracks. Just kind of like, uh, fill in space. The MC tracks, too, are a little hit or miss for me. None of the rappers here on, on this album go hard, but that's never the kind of MC that, that Nuja Beast has really brought on to his albums. If you're a fan, of this dude, you're gonna remember a lot of these MCs from past efforts. The best MC track for me is Sky Tumbling, which is just really captivating. It has great lyrics and this really fiery sax solo that kind of bellows away underneath them. I really like Pace Rock's lyrics on the song Yes Too. Even though I think the beat's okay, and some of the editing on his vocals over the hook is kind of shoddy. The other MC tracks on here, like Waiting for the Clouds or, or City Lights, do feel kind of underwhelming to me, though. Just not as bold sonically or, or statement-wise. You know, if you're a fan of Nuja Beast, if you listen to this album, you're gonna pick up basically what, what is his usual style with some progressions here and there on a few tracks, but you know, the, this album for me is just a mixed bag of different song qualities. Some moments on here feel kind of bold and detailed and memorable and just really kind of progressive and others just kind of float away in the breeze. I'm just kind of, you know, a little let down that this is the swan song of this project, you know? Though I'm sure fans want to hear this, I wanted to hear this, I just don't feel like it's as great as previous material, which is why maybe I would have felt a little more comfortable with this being a compilation as opposed to an album. And that wouldn't have made me like the tracks on here I didn't like. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know me. Talk, talk, talk. That's all I do. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this, but what do you think about it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think this was a good ending for this project? Do you feel any closure from this album? Will you be returning to this if you are a Nuja Beast fan? Or will you pretty much be spending most of your time listening to the two previous LPs? Let me know. Anthony Fantano, Spiritual State, Rest in Peace, Forever.